Wow, what an exciting day. We just heard about our new product release from Allen. I'm here in the Vogue Theater in uh, downtown Vancouver. Uh, it's a lot quieter here than usual, but this is a beautiful venue to talk more about Advantage. I'm Mark Johnson, Vice President of Quantum Products at D-Wave Systems. Now let's get into my talk. When I started at D-Wave back in 2005, my first assignment was to design and then test with my friends a superconducting integrated circuit chip that had two qubits coupled together. By the time we've gotten out to thousands of qubits, I'm no longer designing or testing those circuits because we have more, better, and smarter people to do that. But I still have the privilege of working with an outstanding team of scientists, engineers, software and applications developers, research technicians, and a lot of other folks uh, that are needed to work together to bring the technology that we're going to talk to you about today. And so I'm honored to be here on their behalf uh, to tell you about Advantage, our new product, the most powerful, well-connected quantum computer built to date, and the only quantum computer built for business. Now, at the core of Advantage uh, is a superconducting quantum annealing processor with more than 5,000 qubits, more than 35,000 couplers, built out of a, a new qubit topology with two and a half times uh, the inter-qubit connectivity of any previous generation of our processors. Underlying that quantum annealing processor, and in fact the whole product, is a central idea to solve larger and more complex problems that are relevant for business. Advantage is the first, the largest, most densely connected, powerful quantum computer built to date. So it's here, now, in Leap, our quantum cloud service, and I encourage you to log in and try it out. Uh, but first, before you do that, let me tell you a little bit more about it and a little bit more about how we got here. D-Wave has always taken a practical approach to quantum computing, concerning ourselves with whose problems are we solving, which problems are most important for business. And I'm showing here in this plot, over the course of years on the x-axis, the size of demonstrated quantum annealing processors that have been developed and put forward by D-Wave. On the y-axis, we're plotting the number of qubits plus the number of couplers on a log scale as a measure of the size and complexity of the technology being delivered, but also something about the scale of the problems that are being solved. Up here in 2011, we were the first to develop, release, and sell a quantum computer. Uh, the D-Wave 1, which had about 100 qubits in it. A little further up, you can see the 2000Q, our product for the last few years. And at the top, Advantage, something my friends and I have been developing for several years to bring to you. Over the course of these years, we've received about 10 years of third-party user feedback, customer feedback, telling us about what was easy, what's hard, what works well, and what doesn't. And we have received that feedback and distilled it down into a few key principles that underlie the design philosophy of Advantage. Customers told us that real problems often have a lot of constraints between variables, a lot of complexity. Uh, a lot of interaction between qubits means a lot of inter-qubit couplers. Advantage delivers two and a half times the connectivity of all of our previous generations of processor. That is now each qubit in Advantage is connected to 15 other qubits. Uh, as compared to six other qubits with our last generation technology. So a couple of examples I want to show you to give you a sense of what does that actually mean in practice. Uh, you may have followed the work of some of our friends a couple of years ago performing a quantum simulation of a cubic uh, icing spin glass. Uh, this work was done on the 2000Q, our last generation processor, uh, and that work published in Science Magazine a couple of years ago, implemented a 8 by 8 by 8 uh, cubic lattice. On Advantage, we can model a 15 by 15 by 12 uh, cubic lattice, which you can see here, we're able to represent five times larger spin glass or material with a new technology. But there's something that you can't quite see here uh, in the image uh, that's, I think, a really important point. In the 8 by 8 by 8 lattice on the 2000Q, each node there is represented by four physical qubits. In the Advantage implementation, each node is actually represented with only two qubits. The embedding, the representation of the problem, is more compact and more efficient. And with quantum annealing, a more compact representation, a more compact embedding, means better performance. So the point here is that we're now able to embed larger and more complex problems 
and we can do so more compactly, and that gives us better performance. That's really the bottom line. Now, there's another important point even below the surface of that that I, I really want to drive home. At every step of the way, when we were confronted with design decisions, each time we broke in favor of being able to solve larger problems. What this means is that a lot of times those benefits, the higher performance, uh, isn't, doesn't manifest if one's looking at an individual qubit or a small toy problem. And the fact of the matter is we don't build quantum computers to solve small toy problems. We build them for large problems at the scale of business. Another example are our cliques, our fully connected graphs. Uh, we can pose uh, fully connected graphs more than twice the size on advantage uh, than we could with a 2,000 cube. The significant increase in complexity and connectivity uh, was really bought and paid for by a substantial increase in the fabrication technology. That means more layers, more materials, a lot more complexity. Uh, as an example, the active element in the superconducting technology is the Joseph's injunction. And in the 2000Q processor, we had about 128,000 Joseph's injunctions, which actually at the time was something of a record for a commercial product. With Advantage, we now have, in this chip, a million Joseph's injunctions. And this is just completely blows out of the water anything that I had seen or heard of before in, in, in my career. The active area of the chip is about eight millimeters on a side. Uh, that's about the scale or the size of my, my fingernail. On that chip, there are about 110 meters of superconducting wiring, much of it only a quarter micron thick, and that's less than a hundredth of the diameter of a human hair. Just to get a sense of that, if you imagine in proportion scaling up that quarter micron wide wire uh, to a meter wide footpath, you would have a path that wrapped around the Earth 11 times. At least that's how I figured it. You might want to check my math. More than 5,000 qubits, more than 35,000 couplers, that's a profound increase in the device count, in the scale of the processor. This means we have a lot more to control and a lot more information to read off the chip. So we had to substantially increase the control circuitry available in the processor. The Advantage processor has more than 91,000 superconducting flux stacks. That's about five times as many uh, in the previous generation. It's got more than 27,000 quantum flux parametron shift register stages. Uh, that are used to route the data out to an array of micro-resonator readouts. And this is a new readout technology for us, and it allows us to get the data out more quickly and without a lot of contention. There are a number of features that a user won't notice, uh, but might notice by their absence. So for example, a great deal of uh, work went into the cryogenic technology. There are a lot of advances and innovations uh, towards increasing the resiliency and the reliability of our dilution refrigerator. We are now measuring our hold time for these systems, or run times in years. This is not something that you would need to know as a user. You would only know if it was, if it was not there. But the point of all this, really, is about being able to solve larger and more complex problems, to be able to represent them more compactly on the processor, and then indeed to give us better performance for this. My friend Kathy McGue is going to talk to us a little bit later today about performance. Uh, and I don't want to steal her thunder, uh, but she'll be talking to you, for example, about finding much larger ground states on cliques, on fully connected graphs than we've seen before. So the reach for solving larger business scale problems doesn't end at the processor itself. Uh, there's another important point that we've distilled from all the user feedback that we've received over the years. It's actually a belief that we have that the first quantum applications that bring value to customers will be hybrid in their non-trivial use of quantum and classical computational resources. You heard earlier uh, from Alan about the update to the HSS solver, the hybrid solver service, now able to solve problems with as many as a million variables. Well, my friend Murray Tom is going to talk about that a bit later. And he'll also talk about the new DQM solver, discrete quadratic model solver. These are examples of hybrid solvers that are available now in our quantum cloud service. So when I think about the journey that we've been on over the arc of the processors that I showed you earlier, there are a number of things about this that I find breathtaking. The depth and sophistication of the team that I get to work with, the scale and complexity of the technology uh, that we've developed, and also the number and variety of applications that folks have tried out on our processors. 
No less breathtaking for me is the combination of a quantum computer, a leap quantum cloud service, and the ocean tools uh, that allow people to develop applications, all working together. It was really uh, interesting uh, watching the beta test program recently with many of our customers exploring the different parts of this ecosystem and using them in combinations that I don't think we had quite dreamed of. I think it's sufficient to say that we learned a great deal from that as one wants to from a, from a beta test program. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to my friend Murray Tom so he can tell you about these wider ecosystems. Thanks, Mark. It's great to be here with you today. Hey, Murray, good seeing you again. Where's the mask? Uh, I lost it. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here with you in Vancouver in the Vogue Theater and to be with those of you around the world. My name is Murray Tom. I'm the Vice President of Software and Cloud Services at D-Wave, and it's a great pleasure to be here during this Qubits meeting at our Advantage launch to be talking to you about Leap for Business. I'm actually celebrating my 18th year at D-Wave this month, and it's very exciting when I think back on my career and look back, it's sort of gone through three phases, with the first phase being building the quantum computers and just bringing them into reality. And at that time, we couldn't be sure that we were going to be successful at building the machines at all and bringing them to market. Then, 10 years ago, we sold our first system to Lockheed Martin, and that brought a second phase to my career, which was about putting quantum computers into customers' hands. At that time, I was able to talk to users about what quantum computers were, what kind of problems do they solve, and working closely with them to help them write their first programs using quantum computers. And the third phase is really about making it easier for developers and businesses to realize the value of quantum applications using quantum hybrid cloud technologies. And that's what the, the phase we're in now that I'm really excited to be sharing with you. The things I'm going to be talking about today are the leap quantum cloud services and our quantum application environment. I'm going to be stepping back and taking a larger view of the whole uh, industry and how the Advantage System in Leap is at the forefront of its maturation and um, businesses who are using it in order to be able to bring value to their businesses. We have to sort of acknowledge a, a transition that's happened in the market relatively recently. And in the last year, quantum computers have begun supporting commercial applications. It's, it's fascinating to have seen how much has changed in that 18-year period. And with that, that's having a ripple effect throughout our economies. There are 15,000 developers who are currently enrolled in Leap and participating in our community there and getting involved in learning about new programming skills, what can quantum computers be useful for, uh, how can they be applied to their new creative ideas that they want to bring to market. There are entrepreneurs who are building businesses based on quantum computing and the new solving capabilities that allows them to bring to market. Also, there are service providers like Accenture who are training up talented teams in order to be able to work with their customers and clients to create new solutions and to guide them in how this new technology is, is uh, taking their business in a different trajectory. There are major cloud providers who are moving into this space. AWS has launched its Amazon Bracket service because their customers were ready for quantum computing. They wanted to begin building their applications. They needed to get their workforce trained up on how to leverage the technology for the applications that they need to build as well as incubators and universities who are producing a new stream of quantum startups like the Creative Destruction Laboratory at the University of Toronto, who is bringing together energetic entrepreneurs with experienced investors in these advanced technologies in order for those startups to bring their creative ideas to market. So as we think about the larger market, what is the market data telling us? Well, 451 Research conducted um, a survey amongst Fortune 5000 companies, and the survey results showed that 31% of companies have abandoned complex problems because of time to solve. I think we can all relate to that experience, where we actually see at the borders of our creativity an option to bring a, a, an idea, to bring a solution to our customers, but it's just beyond the skills or the tools that we have available to us right now. As we think about the moment of time that we're at, we want to think about how preparation is meeting those opportunities and how can we leverage this new technology to take advantage of those opportunities instead of leaving that value in our wake. In addition to that, four out of five companies have quantum use cases in mind for the next three years. 
and about two out of those five companies have already started programming those quantum computers. What they're after is a competitive advantage. That's how dynamic our economy is. These technology companies and these entrepreneurs are ready to take up any new technology that's available to them so that they can demonstrate that they're different. They have the capability to onboard these complex technologies, to make them simple for their customers, and to translate them into business value. And the, the benefit that they're expecting is increased efficiency. The ability to derive high quality answers or higher quality answers than they've previously been able to do and to be able to obtain them in less time. Now let's take a moment to talk about hybrid solvers. And by hybrid solvers, I'm talking about professionally designed and managed uh, solvers that run problems on a combination of both quantum and classical resources in order to be able to obtain high quality solutions. I'm not talking about simulators. It, this is not about explaining the behavior of quantum computers. This is about creating solutions with real value in commercial contexts at a production scale. We have a binary quadratic model solver that we brought out earlier this year and it is now being expanded so that it can accept problems of up to one million variables. That's not because we're expecting every problem that's going to be submitted to be that large. In fact, Denso, an auto parts manufacturer during our beta program, was testing problems that they were seeing up to 25,000 variables. What it's about is creating the room for developers to be able to build their applications at enterprise scale without really experiencing the limits of the processor itself. We are also bringing about a new solver next week called a discrete quadratic model solver. And this allows variables with discrete multilevels. The discreteness is what makes these problems really challenging to solve with existing computing technology that's available to us. And what this new solver is going to allow developers and businesses to approach are optimization problems that involve choosing from a set of options. Now, I'm not just talking about binary options like true or false options or selecting a site or not, or making a purchase or not making the purchase, you know, a neuron in a network that's firing or not firing. I'm talking about choosing between 11, 19, and 29, or choosing colors like red, yellow, and green. Customers are going to find that they can actually solve problems in a form that's closer still to the problem form that, that they're experiencing uh, as they feel it in the real world and the language that they need to express their problems. Now, the important thing I want to touch on with hybrid solver technology is that we've all heard that quantum computing has the ability to bring tremendous performance and disruption to our economies. And the performance part, that's great. We would all love to have that performance. But the disruption part from the customers and the developers that I've been talking to, maybe they'd like a little bit less of that. We don't want to be in a situation where we have a critical inflection point where anybody who is later misses out and anyone who is ahead of time is uh, trying to predict the future in a crystal ball. And that's the benefit of a hybrid technology is that it's going to allow users uh, developers, businesses, to get the benefit of the best that both classical and quantum technologies can bring together. And it's also going to allow their teams to get trained up in the technology, to learn about its capabilities, and to begin bringing it into their organization uh, early so that as the technology develops, they're actually going to see that benefit filter in through those applications uh, without having to predict the timing to with a, a really fine moment. In Leap, right now, the Advantage system is available. So businesses, developers, and new users are going to be able to go there and get access to the most connected and most powerful quantum computer in the world today. They're going to see some of the features they already knew that were there, like the integrated developer environment, which will now have additional coding examples to help users to bring the Advantage technology into their application spaces, as well as our visualizer for looking at the problems that developers are building and the way that they're transformed as they are sent into the quantum processors, that has been built with the uh, Advantage architecture in mind so that it is ready-made for you to visualize the problems that you're working with. We've also really designed the software and the cloud services in this system in order to make this transition extremely smooth for you as the users. We have our Ocean tools, the, S the open source SDK, is going to be able to use Advantage out of the box. And existing programs will switch over automatically using feature-based solver selection. 
Our hybrid solvers that we've been talking about have already been adapted to the new technology. And what's really great about this is that because they're deployed in the cloud, they are going to be developing in an ongoing way as algorithms are worked on and refined as the technology is better understood over the days, weeks, and months ahead of us. Now, as much as I'm very passionate about the technology, and I love quantum computing, I, I must because I've been working with it for 18 years, what I think is much more important and much more fascinating to the world and to all of us who are joined together at this user group meeting is the applications that people are bringing to the real world and use these advanced technologies in order to get value for their businesses today. Applications like Menton AI, that's a drug discovery company that has really pioneered the use of quantum hybrid solving technologies in order to enable them to do, approach computational protein design. And that means that they are no longer bound by having to sort of develop new proteins which are small modifications or iterations off of existing designs. They can completely rewrite the script and start from a blank page to design uh, proteins for specific targeted uses. Save on Foods is seeing excellent early results in optimization for the grocery industry. And you're going to hear more from the team at Save on Foods later today. Denso is a major auto parts manufacturer. And they have been investigating how to leverage the power of these quantum hybrid technologies to allow them to approach vehicle routing problems where there are different types of modes of transportation that are being considered. What's exciting is that even during our beta program, they were able to solve problems up to 25,000 variables. And OTI, an OLED uh, electronic structure company that has been able to leverage these quantum hybrid technologies um, in their pursuit to design new organic LEDs for their business applications and uses. There are so many examples you're going to hear from today, and those customers, those developers, those businesses are going to be able to express it much better than I can. So I'm looking forward to, just like you, listening in on those presentations and hearing what they have to say. So with that, let's look forward to the opportunity that we all have to unlock the power of quantum computing for our real-world applications, bringing value to our businesses uh, and allowing us to be more efficient and more competitive in the spaces where we're working. We're going to do that with you by enabling you with these million variable problem sizes that you can now approach, with these hybrid solvers which are going to allow you to approach new types of problems and bring the technology to bear in those spaces, and really allowing you to open up your imagination to enterprise scale applications so that you can really think about what are the challenges that we're seeing in our business, in our industry, in our vertical, and let's make sure that you know, we don't have to abandon those complex problems that our business is seeing at scale. Today, you have access to Leap. Next week, you'll have access to the DQM hybrid solver. I'm hoping that you can be one of the first with access to these systems in Leap. And uh, thank you for joining me. I'm looking forward to uh, joining you in the chat room for questions after this talk. With that, let's take our conversation to performance and join our colleague, Kathy. OK, thanks, Murray. And uh, hello, everyone. It's great to be here to talk about what we know uh, so far about performance of uh, two D-Wave products, the new Advantage quantum computer and uh, the upgraded version of the um, hybrid solver service. First, I'll go over some comparisons of Advantage versus the 2000Q processor. And then I'll talk a little bit about the upgraded version of the hybrid solver that we have compared to the earlier product. You know, this is a very quick talk, but if you want to find details of the, the performance analysis, we have some tech reports available. Advantage versus 2000Q. Uh, the most visible difference uh, between the Advantage and the 2000Q processor are the larger number of qubits, of course, and also the higher connectivity in the couplers. Here's an example uh, with the Chimera C6 graph. It's a six by six grid of uh, what we call unit cells and a Pegasus P4, which has the unit cells arranged on the diagonal here. Now, both of these hardware graphs have the same number of qubits in this example, but, but you can see that the Pegasus graph is a lot more uh, connected. It has a lot more couplers per qubits. In other ways, in terms of the balance between the inside the cell versus between the cell qubits, 
it's a more improved topology. And what that means is that uh, not only can you Im embed larger problems onto the hardware graph, the problems are embedded more compactly. And if they're embedded more compactly, uh, that means you can find uh, better quality solutions from the quantum processor. So when I talk about embeddings, here's a, a picture of the, uh, a, you know, a, a general graph that represents an input. And these general graphs have to be minor embedded onto the Pegasus topology or the Chimera topology. And what happens when you do a minor embedding is that individual nodes in the original graph get mapped into what we call chains of qubits in the Pegasus graph. So here's an example where this, this node gets, it's, gets minor embedded and turned into three qubit chain. And the difference between the Pegasus graph and the Chimera graph is that with the more connections, you can do these embeddings more compactly. And that means you have fewer qubits per node, and that means you can fit bigger problems. And with shorter chain strings, you get shorter chains. And shorter chains are stronger. Because you, they're stronger, they're less likely to break. And that overall gives you uh, better solutions. Uh, if we try to embed a clique, a clique is a fully connected graph, and that's the hardest ones to embed because they have the uh, most connectivity, you know, the greatest number of edges per node. If we compare the advantage to the 2000Q, this vertical arrow shows you that uh, with the same chain length, you can get about twice as uh, large a graph. In, instead of a graph of 64 nodes, you could put a graph of 124 nodes onto the Pegasus graph. And similarly, you get shorter chains. Uh, with a, a clique of size 64, needs a chain of length 17 on the Chimera graph, but it only needs a chain of length 7 on the Pegasus graph. And so in this case, we see the, the largest graph that can fit onto the, the chip is increased by 2.5 fold, and the chain length is cut in half, basically. And that general uh, trend, that general pattern, hold for uh, other graph types as well as cliques. You can see some examples of, of well-known graph types in the chart here. And, and basically, we see that on average, the largest problem size that can fit on the, on the chip is increased by about two and a half fold, and the chains tend to be about half as long on other types of graph as well. And because your chains are shorter, they're less likely to break, and therefore you can uh, get away with using a smaller chain strength. And because you, can, you, you need a ch smaller chain strength, you can increase the problem scale of the problem that you're trying to solve, and that all ends up giving you better solutions. And so here's, here are two examples using cliques and a uh, problem class we uh, not all equal 3 sat with the ratio uh, set to 2.1 for those of you who know what that means. And if you look at the scaled residual energies, these are the scaled differences between the median uh, solutions uh, from a sample and the ground state solutions. And if we just compare input by input, the performance of the 2000Q and the Advantage processor, the 2000Q is, or the Advantage rather, is, is giving better solutions 45% of the time, whereas 2000Q is only giving better solutions uh, six, about 6% six, 6 of the time. And so basically points that are below this line count as a win for Advantage compared to the, the 2000Q. And similarly with the not all equal 3 sat, we see more points below the line than we see above the line indicating that Advantage is doing a better job. These numbers don't add up to 100% because a lot of the inputs produce ties. The, the quantum processors can find optimal solutions, and if they're both finding the same optimal solution, that's not gonna, it's gonna be on the line rather than above or below the line. That is what we mean when we say that you're getting better solutions on application inputs. In particular, these are inputs that require embedding and, and chains. And uh, another point uh, that is, is worth mentioning is that when you go from the 2000Q processor to the Advantage uh, processor and you try to re-embed the problem, your, your chain strengths, your optimal chain strength differ. And uh, for those of you who don't have uh, time or you have a use case that doesn't allow optimizing your chain strengths, it's worth knowing that uh, there are post-processor utilities available to help uh, compensate for mistuned uh, parameters in this way. And so here we have an example of uh, we, where we deliberately set the chain strength too, too weak for, for the very large cliques. And so they're, 
uh, their chains are breaking and you're getting invalid solutions from the quantum processor. Uh, you can still see uh, that the uh, Advantage processor is returning better solutions because the orange line is below the blue line in both of these cases, but uh, the problems get big enough and you're just not getting any, solution, any valid solutions back. But if you use the default post processor, you can fix those chains and uh, get uh, decent solutions back from the quantum processor. And, and so we see that not only does the, the left side of this little uh, orange bar here, the, of the two orange bars, it increases, that means you're, you're seeing optimal solutions at higher n. Also, the right side increases uh, quite a bit, which means you're fixing up your broken solutions and getting usable outputs. So uh, that's just a little plug for the use of uh, the hybrid tools and the classical tools that, that we've been putting into the Ocean Toolkit. All right, so uh, speaking of hybrid tools, in February of this year, we launched the Hybrid Solver Service, which is a classical front end that can solve larger than ship problems and uh, uses queries to the quantum processor to uh, guide its search for better solutions. And with the launch of Advantage, we have now a, a version two as opposed to version one, uh, which uses the Advantage processor and which uh, has been redesigned in some ways to, to be able to solve much bigger inputs and also uh, to perform better on certain kinds of problems. Just to give you an overview of how this hybrid approach works, uh, you send your input to, to D-Wave across the internet and there's a, a, a classical front-end solver that, that uh, is a portfolio solver. It's got a collection of different solution approaches. It, it reads your input and it chooses the best combination of solvers to tackle the problem you have. And these, hi these hybrid solvers are heuristics. They're doing a search through a large space of, of possible solutions and they send queries to the quantum processor, which is sitting in the back. And uh, based upon the replies from the quantum processor, those replies are used to guide the search into better uh, regions of the solution space. Uh, we call this quantum acceleration. You can see in these examples here of, of different problem sizes that uh, any heuristic of this type is gonna, if you give it more time, it's gonna find better and better solutions. So there's a pace at which it's converging towards the optimal solution. But if you put the quantum uh, queries in the loop and you see the blue lines here, you can see it's converging faster to uh, better solutions. And that's what we call quantum acceleration, this idea that uh, with guidance from the quantum processor, you can, uh, you can observe faster convergence towards the ground states. And so I, I just want to point out these inputs were uh, constructed to demonstrate that quantum convergence is possible. It may not occur on every input. And also, depending on the runtimes you choose, it may not be observed at the very beginning. It takes some time for the quantum acceleration to, to, uh, to get started. And also, uh, for all of these graphs, we imagine that if you continue the, the runtime uh, out longer and longer, that these two lines are going to merge again because you know basically if you give any heuristic enough time, it's gonna it's gonna eventually get there. So there's a sort of a gap in the in between two small runtimes and two large runtimes. There's sort of a region between very small runtimes and very large runtimes where you 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 should be able to find or you might be able to find uh, quantum acceleration taking place. As mentioned, the, uh, the new version two of the hybrid solver service is uh, able to read much larger inputs. Uh, this orange region here uh, it indicates the new space of problems that can be solved. Version one can go up to uh, 10,000 nodes and version two can go up to 1 million nodes, but not fully connected. If you want sparse, if you need uh, dense graphs, if you need cliques, then you can go up to 20,000 nodes here. Uh, and we have run a performance uh, comparison of, of our two solvers against a, a, a repository of, of problems that contains 27 state-of-the-art heuristics for solving these types of problems, known as MQLib. And uh, we ran a little competition uh, using 45 of the, of the inputs from MQLib uh, that, were, uh, is, that would fit on version one, uh, uh, the version one solvers. 
And uh, we looked at how many times version one wins or ties against MQLIB, how many times version two wins or ties against MQLIB, and then in a head-to-head -head competition, uh, which one is better. And, and you can see basically that the orange bars are higher than the blue bars, indicating that version two is winning more often, winning or tying more often than version one. Basically going from 67% uh, wins to 84% wins on this full set of problems. And then we ran a head-to-head -head competition between version two and version one. And again, you see that version one is winning about 75% of the time. And then uh, after that, we found some even bigger problems in NQLib to look at the space that of uh, problems that are too big to fit on version one. As it turns out, MQLib only goes up to about 50,000 variables, and they're quite sparse, these problems in, in MQLib. And so we couldn't really use this to test the full space of what version two can handle. We look forward to improving our performance on those very large problems. Uh, so that's about it. I just want to give a shout out to a new um, member of the HSS portfolio that will be uh, um, available to, made available to the public next week. Uh, it's the Discrete Quadratic Model DQM Solver. And it, it's a, a new product that's going to be in HSS. And basically the, the meaning of the word discrete here is that instead of solving binary problems where you only get two choices for your output, zero or one, you can, uh, you can have more choices. You get to choose how many possible choices uh, for the values of the output. So there's a, I kind of stole an example from our uh, examples repository in the, in the Ocean Toolkit, where you try to partition a graph uh, into two groups, the Montagues and the Capulets, according to their similarities and dissimilarities as expressed by these graph edges. That's a binary problem because there are two social groups. A discrete problem allows you to, to choose how many groups, more groups, if you want to partition your, uh, your graph into. And so this DQM solver, it's still gonna be, it's part of HSS, which means that it uh, uses quantum queries to help the solver you know, find its way in the solution space. But this is definitely a more convenient way to formulate uh, discrete problems if you have them and it has faster heuristics that target a discrete problem space rather than a binary problem space. And so here are the, the sizes that are gonna be, the problem sizes that are gonna be available when the DQM is open, is available. So uh, that's about it. Uh, the uh, main uh, points that I wanna try to convey here are that the Advantage QPU is uh, certainly able to solve bigger problems than the 2000 Q because uh, it has more qubits and also because it has a higher connectivity of its couplers. And that higher connectivity means that it's able to find better solutions on application relevant problems, which are problems that do get minor embedded. Uh, also, uh, we invested a lot in the Ocean Toolkit and uh, because it, it's become pretty clear that the hardware, the quantum hardware and the classical software uh, work better together than either type of uh, computation mode if working by itself. And so we're looking for better ways to explore that space. The new version of the hybrid solver service can handle larger than chip inputs goes up to a million variables now, and uh, we'll soon have the discrete valued um, DQM solver next week. So thanks very much for your attention. I'll be in the chat room to answer any questions if you're interested, and you can find more details about this, this work in the technical report. Introducing the Advantage Quantum Computer from D-Wave. Advantage is the most powerful and connected quantum computer ever built for business. Welcome to a massive step forward in practical quantum computing. Welcome to Advantage. Today, more than 250 early applications across industries like finance, healthcare, manufacturing, and transportation have been built and run on the D-Wave Quantum Computer but size matters. We've completely re-engineered the Advantage Quantum Computer to deliver performance that scales to in-production applications, solving real-world business problems. Advantage is redefining computing power with a new topology, 
greater performance, and the ability to solve more complex problems. With more than 5,000 qubits and 35,000 couplers, Advantage is the most powerful and connected commercial quantum system ever built. Advantage's greater connectivity enables the system to run larger, more complex problems directly on the QPU. And for problems that don't fit natively on the QPU, the new hybrid solver services in LEAP now allow you to run problems with up to 1 million variables, enabling new solutions to large-scale business-critical problems. Let's go under the hood. With more than 1 million Josephson junctions and a football field of superconducting wiring, Advantage is an engineering feat. With innovations to keep Advantage cool under pressure, our systems have achieved over four years of continuous cold operation in the commercial setting. Featuring more than double the number of qubits and 2.5 times more connectivity than 2000Q, D-Wave's entirely new topology and fabrication process puts the power in the system for business applications. Size matters. Sign up for Leap today and start using Advantage to solve your most complex business problems. The Advantage Quantum Computer, the only advantage you'll ever need.